witnesses. This is a really important topic. Um, I think I have some Virginia teachers in the room, maybe some from Fairfax. They recently had a collective bargaining <laughs> vote that I applaud you on. I, the, the title of this hearing is long. The piece I'm interested in is, is teacher shortages and everything that contributes to them, and you've all talked a little bit about that. My wife is a member of the Virginia State Board of Education appointed by the governor to oversee K-12 schooling in Virginia. She's the last one on the board appointed by a Democratic governor. Everyone else on the board is appointed by the current Republican governor. But I can tell you the one nonpartisan issue they grapple with is teacher shortages all over the Commonwealth all over the Commonwealth, particularly in high poverty schools. There was a study in UVA, out of UVA this spring, 80% of all vacant positions were in the 20% of schools with the greatest number of vacancies. And those schools tend to be high poverty schools, which tend to be either within central cities or in rural Virginia. Some of the shortages are acute in some areas. Special ed is a, is a topical area where the shortages are acute, but they're generally acute in high poverty schools, the students who most need good teachers in the classroom are the students likely to be in schools with high numbers of vacancies. And I think you've all done a good job of kind of explaining some of the challenges. One thing that was not mentioned that I do think should be mentioned is teachers' fears for their own safety. Some of you touched upon it, but no one mentioned gun violence. Um, nobody mentioned gun violence. Um, teachers do active shooter drills with their kids. That wasn't the case when I was in school. It wasn't really the case with my kids. We're in the Richmond public schools, it's the norm now. And a teacher said to me recently, we all do a moment of silence now. And I don't know what the kids are thinking about, but I know what every adult in a school is thinking about during the moment of silence. And it's let today not be the day. Let today not be the day. And that's gotta be daunting for teachers and other adults who work in school systems, just like it's daunting for parents. My kids went to a you know, an, an urban school system, probably 90% free and reduced lunch. I didn't worry when I dropped them off in the morning about picking them up at the end of the day. I didn't worry about it. And they, they finished school just 15 years ago, but this is something that parents worry about now, teachers worry about now, kids worry about now. Um, I was gonna ask that question, Mr. Keyes, about the, uh, the, the pathway program, because I think that really is a solution. Senator Collins and I have a bill called the PREP Act that looks at grow your own, because if somebody has been a paraprofessional in the school system and has demonstrated the ability to compassionately deal with all kinds of students, but they don't have the credential yet to be a teacher, you know they're gonna be a successful teacher if you can get them to that credential. So I'm a big supporter of programs like the one you describe, and we do have bipartisan legislation to try to advance that here. Mr. Arthur, I wanted to ask you about a part of your background, which was national teacher certification. Dr. Kerwin talked a little bit about this. My, my experience in Virginia, but I'm wondering about the Utah experience, is every once in a while in Virginia, we would do a one-time bonus for people that got national teacher certification. But then if the budget was bad next year, it would disappear. So you wouldn't get a continued salary bump, and the person who wanted to get board certified next year wouldn't have that incentive to do it. Um, I, I think while, while teacher salary is something that is primarily a state and local responsibility, I think it could at the federal level be a federal thing. We're talking about national certification. If we wanted a high percentage of our teachers to have national certification, that could be something at the federal level that would be smart to incentivize. Talk a little bit about, were you incentivized in Utah to do this? Did you just take it on because you wanted to do it? What was the Utah program under which you became certified and did it increase your uh, salary? Absolutely, Senator. I receive a stipend every year, both from my district and my state. When I first uh, went through national board certification, I did so just because I wanted to be better for children. I was motivated by what I was seeing in the classrooms of national board certified teachers. But when someone told me I would get paid more, I was like, okay, all right, that's nice. I won't have to ask my wife so much for the money. And, and it's, not, it's not much. It's not enough right now to move people into this. I, get about roughly in Utah, about $4,000 extra year or every year because I teach in a Title I school and I teach in a district that supports that. But not all districts do. States have different programs for this. So if there was a way to make sure that teachers across our country were all incentivized to become the most accomplished educator that they could be, the benefits to our children, the research shows, would be profound. 
And Dr. Kerwin, again, remind me of in the Maryland plan, what yes. do you do around board cert national board yes. certification? Yes, uh, uh, when a teacher becomes board certified, they get a, an increase in salary of $10,000. And that continues in their salary. It is independent of the year. That's part of their base as long as they are board certified. So when they have to be renewed, they, they continue. And uh, uh, Senator Kane, it, it has it's had a very interesting con, uh, uh, consequence. I just learned today, in fact, that Maryland led the nation in the number of teachers who got board certified last year. Maryland is a small, relatively yeah. small state, six million uh, people, but it led the nation more than California, more than New York, uh, and I think that uh, that that salary increase has been a, uh, obviously played a big role in making that happen. And, and if I could, it's a salary increase, but it's a salary increase for doing a lot of work a that, that uh, makes you a better teacher. And Absolutely. the salary increase, even in your case in Utah, where it's somewhat modest, it's a sign of respect. Yeah. It's a sign of respect for the profession. And, and so I think that has a number of positives. And